Okay, see you later. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Lock Spot. I'm your host, Sebastian, right out of Oklahoma City. I got my co-host, Weird Wolf Ava Gore, joining us tonight. And then I'm sitting down with Cody and Chris from the band The Difference Between. What's going on, guys? What's going on? I always going? Thanks for having us. You're welcome. Yeah, absolutely. And I always <laughs> say, what's going on, guys, every single time. <laughs> come with something new to say, but it's kind of hard to, to do that sometimes. Got to keep it consistent. I, yeah, I know. But sometimes change is good, right? Uh, yeah. Maybe a little bit. You okay, just so realized that what? most bands don't thank us for being on the show. <laughs> what did what, you say? Most bands don't like thank us for being on the show, so like it's not that great. <laughs> that's, that's we appreciate you guys. <laughs> you wanted to hear my thoughts on things, and I appreciate that. <laughs> okay, well, we appreciate you appreciating that. Yeah, that's right. Excellent. We do. <laughs> so the band, the difference between, is I think an, a newer formed group, correct? Yep. And formed of several different bands that kind of came together to form the difference between. Kind of, yeah. Okay, so how that how that happen? Like, who started the idea, and, and how did it develop? Um. So it was kind of Cody and I that started. Um. You know, it was like a quarantine thing. Uh. Last year, he had some like ideas on drums and sent them over to me, and I put some guitar over it. And we were like, "Yeah, it sounds pretty sick." So just kind of grew from there. And then uh, the vocalist Chris Roberts, um, he was the original vocalist of Emerosa, like okay. 10, 12, 15 years ago when they first started. Um, they were called Corsets Are Cages at the time, but I've known him. Uh, he's here local to me in Kentucky, so I've known him since back then, and. Uh, I just kind of reached out to him and he was into the sound. And then uh, our bass, or sorry, our guitarist, Garrett, uh, used to play bass in Soft Spoken. So. so, how many people are in the difference between? There's four. Oh. There's four of you guys. Yeah. And I guess, Cody, do you not live in Kentucky as well with these guys? I'm actually the only one who doesn't live in Kentucky. <laughs> I live okay. in like, yeah, it gets, gets rough, but. Uh, you do a lot with computers now, you know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah. uh, I live in uh, Lancaster, Pennsylvania. How far is that from uh, from the rest of the bands from? Uh, it's about uh, 11 hours. Yeah, every time we oh, go, a... I have to <laughs> drive really Damn. far. Damn. So how did you guys even meet to get to do? I mean, was it like from different bands touring together? I... Yeah. Well, you, I've known. You can tell a story. Okay. I've, uh, I've known Chris for a really long time. I play in uh, the band The Sound Like Wolves and... Uh, you know, Chris plays in soft spoken. Mm -hmm. uh, and we just, uh, we went on a tour back in 2017. We were both on the same record label. We were triumphant and we went on a, the weird triumphant tour uh, with our uh, friends in Revenant as well. And I just kind of met Chris there and like our bands got along really well. And then Chris and I have done like different music business ventures and stuff. And we actually a record label as well. Um, but yes, yeah, so I've known Chris for a while now. Um, and then, Chris knew the other guys and we kind of collaborated then. How hard is it to be in, I'm assuming you guys are all still in your other bands or most of you guys still have your other projects. Is this considered a side project or is it considered just a secondary main project? Oh, uh, that's a tough question. <laughs> um, <laughs> I guess. Now, hey, hey, hold on, hold on, <laughs> Ava. Ava, I get one point for that. <laughs> I get one Fair. point for that. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, I think in terms of like the attention that we give it and like, you know, we're still putting marketing money into this band. Um, we've already recorded like an LP worth of material. So I think in terms of the attention that we're giving it, I would consider it, you know, like a secondary main band. Um, when it comes to like touring and stuff, like obviously our, our main bands, soft spoken and sent like wolves much more developed and like farther along. So I'd say those bands take priority, you know, if something were to come up or whatever, but um, but this isn't necessarily on the back burner to me anyway. Is there something different about this band in particular that uh, sets it apart from the other ones for you guys? You can go ahead, Cody. Uh, I mean, mainly the, the thing I really like about it is like, I, I, I actually write the majority, like the whole song layouts on drums and then send it to Chris and Chris fills in the blanks for all of them. It's I've, I've never written music that way. It's, it's pretty, 
So essentially you could send the same drum layout I send to like four different guitarists and get four different songs. But like with Chris and I, it just matches really well. And mm. we both grew up on like the old school post hardcore vibes, like Oceana and like Poison the Well. And uh, so we just kind of really work well together with that. And I, my other band is like, a, it's not like Wolves is more of like a kind of polished, like metalcore, like super high production. Like, uh, and it's just, it's kind of this this one's more raw and just i can have a lot more fun with it like i'm not trying to like make a certain sound with them. i'm just trying to do something naturally you know so this it's kind of like a passion more of a passion project but i mean i love the scent like wolves just as much too but i do consider them like both equally yeah I, i'd say the same for me too like when it comes to uh like writing the approach is definitely different um and like with soft spoken like i said they're it's much more developed band and uh kind of the same situation as as cody like we're very um, precise about how we approach writing our music because of where we are and we have a pressure to, to write a certain way and sound a certain way and certain expectations. Uh, whereas the difference between this band, it's more just like Cody said, like he sends me drums and I just play what I play without really thinking about it. So it's, it's kind of refreshing in that sense, I guess. Uh, okay, so then your writing style for both of you, I guess, would be different with the difference between them than in your other bands you're in but still i mean would you say chris that your guitar style because everyone has like a style right like everyone has yeah. a certain style that they play yeah. Would is your style that much different um with this band than your other band and, and same goes for uh for cody as a drummer i mean wouldn't you think that like is your drumming style different i know there's it's you're not there but is it that much of a difference or do you, is there still similarities to the way both you guys play? Yeah, I would, I would say like definitely like um, to, to anybody who would listen to the songs, it could be like, oh, that sounds like something Chris would play. I'm, I'm sure that's there. Um, I think probably the biggest difference for me as a guitarist is that in Soft Spoken, I write everything with Billy, the other guitarist in that band. So like his input and influence on how the song is made is as equal as mine. Uh, mm -hmm. Whereas this band is just me writing the guitar. So okay, okay. I, I'd say that's the huge difference for me is it's like in soft-spoken, it's Billy's influence is big as well. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. I feel the same way actually. Uh, Chris kind of took the, my, my same response a bit, but uh, <laughs> uh, I, uh, yeah, I mean with the scent like wolves, I pretty much have like, we have a bunch of different writers with us. Uh, like everybody contributes, uh, but mainly as like a drummer, I get the, I get to hear or contribute my part last after like before, the, well, I guess before the vocals, but um, like last and like instrumentals. So with the difference between it's kind of the opposite of that. So I'm actually just kind of creating the grooves and the, the accents that I want to hear and like the breakdown patterns that I like want to put in. I'm not kind of just like adding to something that's already been created, you know? So right, it's kind right. of a different approach, but if you listen to it in both bands, they have the same kind of like drum tropes, I would say. Um, okay. It's like the same, same style. Okay. When did the project start? Like when did, I mean, I don't know if you gave me a specific like time frame. If you did, I wasn't listening. <laughs> I, think you, I, I, think, I, think you, I think you didn't say it. So like, when, yeah, not like, specific. Well, okay. Okay. Was it like, you said during COVID, I think it's so like, just like a year ago, right? Yeah, I think. I, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Cody. I feel like it was like probably November or December when we first kind of like sent some ideas back and forth, like for real. Yeah. Yeah. And we, uh, we, we had like two songs written that we really liked. And we were like, you know what? This is cool. Let's like run with this. And then we started kind of like, we had like low key auditions for vocalists where we would just send like a demo of the song and we try to have somebody like send a demo back with it. And that's how we ended up getting, I mean, Chris knew the other Chris, Chris Roberts for a while, but, uh, Chris's demo was awesome, and I mean, we just kind of rolled with it, and I'm stoked on everything he's recorded so far. That's that's, and I think you guys probably get some recognition off the bat from. I don't know, I don't know. Uh, I know what Soft Spoken sounds like uh, only because they've been on the show before, but I would assume the other band's also probably pretty good that Cody's in. Um, yeah. Is it was it easier to gain like? I guess look, because I see you guys already got some sponsors and working with some partners. On some different things. Is that easier to get because of your other bands? Like, was it like, hey, check out this band, do the same shit for us they do for for the yeah, for for the other guys? Come on, yeah. come pretty, on. Pretty much, yeah. Like, um, and you know, like Cody and I are both kind of in the industry as well. I manage some bands, and like he mentioned, we just started a label this year. So, like, uh, yeah, like you, our, you guys, you you started a label. The two of us, yeah, we did. Oh, yeah. you guys started your own record label. That's awesome. Yep. 
Yeah. Well, you can sign me. I'm in a band. Send <laughs> <laughs> it over, man. <laughs> um, but yeah, you so you're on know. my show. You have to sign us. That's the rule. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you know, it's just it's a lot of contacts that we have and people um, that we've built relationships with who kind of trust us and know our abilities. So it's been easy to kind of show them the music and they'll be like, "All right, yeah, I dig this," and kind of roll from there. That's cool. So you that guys aren't. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. I was just gonna say that we just we we've done this for like so many years now, and have crashed and burned so many times in other projects, <laughs> and learned from those mistakes, and just got older. And I mean, it's just nice to start something fresh, knowing what we know now of like over a decade of trying this stuff. You know. Yeah. So. Whatever. <laughs> Newfound wisdom. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Hard. For sure. For sure. <laughs> So would you say that when you guys go on tour with one with one of there's three bands in between just the two of you guys, right? Yeah. So and I guess maybe is the other guys in other bands also? No. Okay, Not so just actually. the two of you guys are in other bands. So if you guys so if one band goes on tour, you think it's possible, I guess, to maybe try to bring the other one along so you can have like three <laughs> bands in one, like all three, like you know, yeah. maybe you gotta do two sets, but fuck it, whatever. Yeah. We've talked about it. Yeah, we've talk, <laughs> we talked about doing it. And like soft spoken, we don't, you know, officially have an actual like drummer member. Uh, we have like some fill ins. So I, I brought it up. I was like, yeah, dude, we should do it. And like, Cody, you can just three play sets. drums for <laughs> three sets. And, and Garrett, you know, uh, he plays, Garrett's the guitarist in different stream, but he used to play bass in soft spoken. So we just have like a revolving thing. It'd be great. Dude, if you guys played back to back, you'd be on stage for fucking ever. Yeah, I'd die. For sure. <laughs> yeah, I'd be, I'd be uh, very sweaty and tired. Yeah. <laughs> you, you have to do it to like where they didn't play back to back. You know what I'm saying? So you can take yeah. a break yeah. in between. Yeah. Uh, Ava, I think Ava, Ava could, she could do a long set. I think. <laughs> oh really? <Just> crush it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ava, Ava, should, be, Ava should be your new drummer. I think she can play the drums a little bit. <laughs> right. I can play very basic drums. Hey, but hey very that's all you need. I need the do do ka Fucking, that's a ticket. That's gold right there, man. Yeah. Right. I can write some. So, <laughs> a band brand new, not even that old, already getting some recognition. You guys already have a music video uh, that you came out with. Super, I mean, like, super, was this like the first song you guys wrote? And you're like, fuck it, music video, let's go. It's it's not actually the yeah. first song, yeah. Okay, sorry, right, Cody. It's like right, right around there, yeah. Second song, yeah. <laughs> so we're second song, <laughs> and then and then you guys just picked this one to do the music video. You guys liked it the most, and is this the only music video that you guys have? Right now, yeah. Uh, we had another one that was shot. Uh, we just haven't gotten it back yet. Um, so so yeah, we have we did those two songs first. Um, we decided to do those two just because we thought they were like. The one in Venom that has the video was kind of a good introduction to the sound. And then the other mm -hmm. one, Detached, is a little bit more um, catchy, I guess. And then uh, we're just kind of saving for videos for, for the additional material that we have recorded right now. No, you don't want to blow your load on this for the first year you guys are yeah. out, man. Right. You want to yeah. save you want to save it a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> okay. This song is called <laughs> in Venom. Thanks for laughing at my joke, Abe. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> this, this song is called in Venom. This and, and when did this when did the video come out? Uh, July second. July second. Damn, so like two months ago. Yep. Two months yeah. and almost two weeks. All right. Let's check out the song, then we're going to talk about it. Here we go.
All right, that is a great music video and a very cool song, man. I mean, that's that's like the video, the video, whoever shot that video did an awesome job. Cody, were you there for that video or was it like they put it together? They had to put it together. <laughs> you know, and you know, what's funny? <laughs> you know what's funny about that, dude, is I would have, I, I would have bet that you would have said that you were there. I swear to God, I was just curious and I knew you lived 11 hours away. <laughs> yeah, that. That's cool that you think that and it looks that way, but nah, I wouldn't lie to you like that. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have known neither. Would, but that, yeah, that's, that's super neat. I mean, the guy did a great job of, of piecing that together. And you guys do have another song. I see what I did was I went through my notes finally from the long story, backstory anyways. But you guys you guys did have another song. They guys came out with a, like a, was it a lyric video, Detach? Yeah. Okay. Now, was that your first song? That was the second. <laughs> oh, that's no, second song. No, I don't remember. Second, second release song. I don't remember when okay. we did that. And are you guys going to do a music video or just, just keep that for YouTube and just move on to the next project? Probably just move on. Okay, okay. After uh, hearing about your writing process, I was very focused on the guitar and the drums, and uh, they're pretty awesome, I have cool. to say. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, Sharon, did, Sharon did ask. She says... Tell us what makes you different. That's a broad question and maybe hard to answer, but is there something specific that you think or feel that makes you guys stand out more than other bands in similar genres? Yeah, I'd say it's uh, old school post-hardcore sounds, which is like the new age production and what post-hardcore is doing right now. Just, uh, like, like I said earlier in the, in the, the podcast, the, uh, we take a lot of influence from bands like Oceana and uh, Lower Definition, and uh, which check out Lower Definition's new music if uh, you haven't yet, and uh, like Poison the Well and Glassjaw. And oh, I love just, Glassjaw, man. They're so sick. Yeah, yeah they're amazing. Um, but yeah, it's kind of just like those that kind of style of music, but in 2021. Would you would you say that it's almost like starting over? Like not, it's not starting over because you guys have your bands and there's something new, but is it? To actually officially get started with this other project, being in bands that are doing bigger things and just kind of just being the baby, obviously it's going to sound good because everyone knows what they're doing. Um, but was it like, was it motivating or was it like, do we really want to start from scratch on a whole new project? Like, was that kind of difficult to, to finally get up and start doing? So you should get a point for that question too. It's a good one. <laughs> yeah, you're doing good tonight. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, I, th I definitely think there are moments, um, you know, I think Cody and I are both confident in our, not only our musicianship, but also like our ability to push music, um, and, you know, release it well and all that kind of stuff. Um, but there's definitely those moments where you're like, you know, we were, we were like, okay, let's get, let's get to a thousand likes or, you know, like, let's reach these small milestones. Um, mm -hmm. there's still that aspect of it, you know, cause you do want to see it grow and you want to see reactions to it. Um, mm -hmm. But for me, it's it's still exciting. You know, it's it's kind of cool to not have to like, like I said earlier, there's not as much pressure for me. Um, so I'm just happy with anybody kind of like hearing what we do and, and being into it. Honestly, it's a creative safe space. Yeah, yeah, it's a good way to put for it. Sure. Better, it's better answer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I kind of agree that it's very refreshing to me. Like, I mean, uh, like like I said earlier, it's just like um, it just feels great to kind of make something new with a team like a really great team that already knows exactly what's going on with stuff and have to figure things out like and then i just have uh like 10 years of wisdom of like I, like i said before crashing and burning and <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> learning learning the music industry about the hard way you know and just learning what, how to like tour and stuff the hard way and um yeah it's just great to kind of have a blank slate and just do whatever we want with it and just have fun with it. I, I feel like there's so much to learn in the music industry, even after so many years of doing yeah. it. You really, you really learn the best when you do crash and burn, man. Like yeah. that's when you get your life lessons handed to you, like uh, in a bad way. For sure. That, that's where you grow from, though. That makes you a bet. That makes you better at your position and what you're trying to accomplish. Because now you know what to stay away from, right? If you're yeah. smart. Yeah. If you're, yeah, if you're smart, yeah, exactly. For sure. If you're stupid, then just gonna keep on fucking up. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> You know, I don't think people appreciate failing like they should. You yeah, know, right. I've like it, it's it's humbling and you need it. It's like like seriously, I, I've I've 
I've crashed and burned so many times at shows. Like I've had my whole drum set fall off the stage. Just like I've had our back tracks play the click track, the whole like just the stupidest things that I'm sure any band listening to this like, ha, yeah, it had to happen to me. But you grow from that. <laughs> you grow so much from that. And like all, all you see on social media a lot of times is just people showing their success stories and just like all, but they don't tell you all the nitty gritty awful times they've had getting to those success stories. And yeah. I personally embrace those. <laughs> Dude, it's like it's like this is a horrible comparison, but I'm gonna say it anyways because that's what I do, right? <laughs> oh, it's like, it's, like, it's, like, it's like no one's someone that has a gambling problem that's at the casino every single night. You know they waste like two, three hundred bucks a night, and then they win one, and they're like, "I won ten thousand dollars." That's all they can talk about. But like, yeah, you just spent like fucking thirty thousand yep. dollars last year losing, right? You know, yeah, exactly. A hundred percent. No one will really ever tell you that. Yeah, but. Uh... There's a lot of failure to get the success. So that guy yeah. probably spent tens and tens of thousands of dollars just to make that 10,000. But that 10,000 was enough of a high for him to keep losing more and more money. <laughs> that, that's, yeah, that's, that's how they get you. That's how they yeah. get you. Yeah. Sounds a lot like music. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Yeah. It was a great comparison. That's, I get another point for that. I get like a half point. Like a, a half point, all right? All right. Let's take a step buddy. back. Let's, <laughs> Hey, cheers. Let's let's take a step back and let's talk about the label for say it's you two guys in the label, right? Yep. Okay, you get you guys started the label. So we talked about your band. I, I find it interesting. I didn't know that you guys had a label. Mm -hmm. So we might as well talk about it a little bit. Mm -hmm. What do you particularly look for? Let's say a band's want to reach out to you and they want to be signed to your record label and they want you to help them with X, Y, Z, whatever it is, uh, which we're gonna talk about that as well. What are you looking for, a specific genre, style, or is it just you like it? I would say, um, like for me, first and foremost, is I, I just got to like the music. Um, and then I, I wouldn't say like we're I – would, I would definitely say we're in like the rock metal world. Um, you know, any, anything too far out of that, we don't have a lot of experience with to like be confident pushing it, you know, like if a rap right. artist came to us or something, I wouldn't really know what to do with that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, for me, it's like, I got to like the music and then I got to like the people is, are my, my first two things. And then I'm sure Cody's got similar. Yeah. I mainly, like, I obviously have to like really love the band and vibe with everything they're going on with it. But um, I just also have to really believe in them. Like after we always have like, so we set up calls with them and we talk to all the bands and all the members and like, if, we believe in their drive and we just kind of see that they're like really going to be in this for the long haul and be about it. That's definitely some, some points there for them. Um, another thing is just kind of like, I, I'm a sucker for production. Like, like Chris said, we work in the rock and metal world in today's day and age, you need to have some like crazy production and stuff. So um, we, we're all about just, uh, I'm a sucker for metalcore and post hardcore. So when I hear like metalcore and post hardcore produced really well, I'm really drawn in right away. <laughs> but, um, yeah, mainly for me, it's just kind of drive and work ethic, which so you can have the best song ever, but if you don't have the drive to put it out there and market right. it well and like learn the, the business behind it a little bit or put some effort, mm -hmm. here, no one's going to hear that incredible song you had. You can just be bitter about it then. You, know, you see that all the time in the music world. Yeah. yeah. And what's, what's, but, what is the name of the record label? It's called. Uh, it's called. Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> it's called Theoria Records. Okay. Oh, okay. I think I did. Was that on the? Was that like on the song somewhere? Yeah, yeah. We released the difference between through through the label. Okay, through your own. So you guys signed yourselves. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Technically, no. What? <laughs> Experiment. <laughs> yeah, that's so. Like all of our crash and burns, we test with our band first before we, you know, do anything else for the bands that actually matter. I, yeah, I'm sure I started, our bands love that. <laughs> That's <laughs> true, though. <laughs> I started a record label once called Probably Not Famous Records. True story. And nobody that we signed were famous, and I think I was the only band signed to it. So my, 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 my own band. How many bands do you guys have onto the label? And what do you do for the bands on the label if someone's looking to maybe get signed by an independent record label and maybe they want you to help them out? Tell us uh, how many bands you got and what do you do for the bands that uh, you work with? Go ahead, Cody. Um, so we, um, just getting the nitty gritty of it, we're actually an imprint label of uh, We Are Triumphant. Uh, they're a lot bigger label. They're established for years now. Um, we work with uh, The Orchard for distribution. 
Okay. Um, so that's definitely a, a great plus to have. Um, as of right now, we have eight bands that we have announced and we've put releases out for a sound like Wolves, uh, Soft Spoken, and then um, a Japanese band called uh, Abstracts. They're not signed. We just put out songs for them. Um, but we try to just kind of, we, like, we, Chris and I have, like, a unique experience of knowing what it's like being signed to, like, a bunch of kind of shady contracts and just, like, going through, like I said before, multiple times in this, the crash and burning in the music industry and learning mm -hmm. very hard lessons. Um, so with all that being said, we just kind of try to make everything as artist friendly as we can, just cause we have empathy for those artists and know that they, a lot of times, like I said before, you could be the best band ever, but if you're not marketing yourselves, you don't have somebody teaching you and coaching you and all that stuff, you're and never going to get your music out there. So and you gotta we try listen. to provide all that. Yeah. Yeah. The, band, yeah, the, band, gotta... the bands have to listen <laughs> to their label. Cause I can, I, I can only That's imagine, one. <laughs> you know, the biggest thing I would think is like, you know, if you sign a band before you sign them, you probably want to know the personalities, make sure they're going to listen because you can have someone with the biggest head who thinks they're the best guitar player, the best singer, their band shit doesn't stink. <laughs> You and you try to give exactly them advice. That's what he said, but in different words. Yeah, but I, 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 I say it more like in your face, like, hey, motherfucker, I'm going to tell you what to do. And you're going to listen. back about it. <laughs> <laughs> See, you guys should have me on your record label. I'll tell them, hey, fucking listen, you you're fired. You'll be you're our fired. <laughs> We'll send weekly updates, video updates to all of our bands. If you just telling them what's up. <laughs> I, I will do that. I, I won't even charge you to yell at somebody. I'll do it for free. <laughs> that they have an interview with you but really it's just you yelling at them <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i'm cool with that i think you've that. actually had a couple of our bands i think uh didn't you have poltergeist yes poltergeist i did have them on recently actually yep. yeah it was like probably like around august oh i think we, we actually talked about that's maybe where i heard you guys' name before also i think i asked if they were signed or whatever okay yeah. You, did you watch it? I, I haven't watched it yet. I'll be negative, honest. Negative point for you. <laughs> <laughs> negative point. At least he's honest <laughs> about it. I could have just been like, yeah, man, you crushed it. That was a fucking <laughs> awesome interview, bro. <laughs> <laughs> His ego would have eaten that up. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm going to be honest with you and tell you I didn't watch it. <laughs> I will. <bro. laughs> I will, right now. <laughs> all right. All right. I, window I, here. I, I, I am going to ask you guys if you guys have a website um yet and do you guys have merchandise yet for the band or the label so right, let's go back to the band for this okay okay uh website yeah yes. it's called uh, yeah <laughs> but yeah uh the the band does have a website it's uh t like the letters t d b like difference between uh okay. dot band.com um we don't we don't really have any merch yet we're kind of working on that right now um you know we haven't really played shows we're not really exactly sure when we're going to be playing shows we're not uh, rushing the merch side of things. Right. Okay. Well, go ahead. Ava, do you want to ask something? Um, I can. <laughs> <laughs> we're about to get off. We're going to ask a question and we're going to get off. And let's go ahead and give Ava, I get three points. Uh, Chris gets negative one. Cody, I'm going to tie him with three for me. And I'm going to give Ava five for the skeleton in the background. So she's going to win today. Uh, She's pretty badass. <laughs> Thanks. Go ask the last question, then we'll get off the show. <laughs> um, so what was, or would you say that music has been a part of your life since the beginning? Um, yeah. All right. For, you're saying if, if it has been a part of my life since the beginning? Yes. Yeah. Um, I would say at least since I was like old enough to, so like my older brother, uh, he's, he's like 11 years older than me. So as soon as I was old enough to like understand the world in some sense, I saw him playing music. And since then I've been into like guitar, especially. Uh, so I would say since I had the ability to, to be influenced by anything, I was definitely influenced by music. Um, yeah, same with me. I don't know. I just always like, I, I was, I'm the oldest in my family and, uh, none of my siblings play or, uh, like my, my family were never into music or anything. I, I don't know. I just always had a knack for it. And it was always just kind of like my crutch when I was anxious or something, or just, I always had, had music playing. And then I started out playing the saxophone when I was younger and uh, I always wanted to play the drums. My parents weren't having it. And eventually I just kept like drumming on stuff in the house and like making my own like makeshift drum sets. Eventually my like grandparents saw I was really into it. And 
I don't know if they were trying to get on my good side and butter me up or something, but they ended up buying me a drum set like, behind my parents' back and uh, I had a drum <laughs> set for that. a while. For yeah, it's, it was great. And then I was like, I just like, you know, it's like a crappy like two hundred dollar, but I, I love I loved it so much. It, it was awesome. Um, and then eventually, like uh, I got my parents saw that I was doing really well with it, and uh, I joined the, the band. I got I started taking drum lessons, doing drum line and stuff, and I just kind of like did it through college. Oh, so you're like uh, a good drummer. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, I, I, I like to think so. I try. I try. I try to be. <laughs> Unlike Sebastian, um, I'm like, yeah, I'm like, no, I, I didn't do any of that but, shit, man. <laughs> banging on stuff. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm all about rudiments. I don't know. I, I like to. I was in jazz band for a lot of my life and took like courses in college. But anyway, uh, yeah, I love drumming. But I, it's always been a part of my life, and I always have like music playing. I just, I just love music, and ultimately, I love. Not only playing it, but I love probably like similar to Chris, just the, the the background of like how music gets to the listener, like the business behind how a song gets digested by somebody else and gets to them, you know. So that's kind of where the label comes in, and yeah, right on. And last thing, real quick, I did want to just mention. Um, so your singer's name is also Chris. Yeah, Chris Roberts. Yeah. So the band should be called Two Chris's and a Cody. And a Garrett. Yep. And a Garrett. And a Garrett. <laughs> and a Garrett. <laughs> the trick is please and a G. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Don't go anywhere. Stay right there. Thanks, everyone, for listening to the podcast. Go to www.thelostpod.net. Subscribe to us on YouTube, and we'll take your money if you go to patreon.com forward slash the lost spot and give me all your money. I would appreciate that. Okay. That's all I got. <laughs> Peace out. Rock on. And much love. And here is the outro song. This is the loud spot outro by nothing short of tragic. Is this all talk with no action? No. Is this my thoughts with distraction? No. Is this what I bought that's in fashion? Or is this the loud spot with Sebastian? Yes. Does nothing short of tragic have his back again? Yes. Does everything that's good really have to end? Yes. A pin post has a pin show, so to get more episodes, make an order, this is over. Thanks for watching our video. Don't forget to click the like and share button. Don't forget to go to our YouTube and subscribe. If you want to listen to our audio and pick up some cool merch, go to www.theloudspot.net. Peace out, rock on, much love.